Well, guys, up until now, I almost forgot that I'm uh, looking at a pickup truck. Now, that really reminds me of it, that back seat that's kind of like on the GMC uh, Sierra. Now, the interior is very interesting and it's very roomy. I do have plenty of room, you know, as far as my headroom, as far as my shoulder room, even as far as my knee room, even though I push this seat a little bit more back than I normally would just to film the interior of this vehicle, I still, I'm still not touching the front seat. I am six feet tall for your point of reference um, and there's plenty of room. The interior is very interesting. Let me show it to you. Let's check this out guys. You can see the interior is two-tone as well as the exterior on this vehicle. It's for black and white. It's pretty cool. It does have some of this bronze accents on it. And you can see that on the door handle as well as over here. So this is all fabric right this is like the injection plastic molding this is a little bit of different uh, material used right on top of here uh, overall it's a very positive experience now it does have a lot of this hard plastic here that uh, i don't think we should see in a you know six figure vehicle now what's interesting in here is you can see the speaker cover and if you look closer it is bose but it also has like this moon map over here and we're going to see that a little bit more pronounced in some of the other parts of this vehicle but the that's basically a tribute or a reminder that GM actually was involved in the developing the electric rover for the Apollo 15, 16 and 17 mission. And that's why they have a lot of this moon references over here. So check out the back seats, white on top, black at the bottom. Again, this is a fabric, right? This is this very uh, durable looking fabric. Uh, this insert right here, it looks like a leather and then this out here is all fabric as well. So check this out. There's a little storage compartment right inside of here that's out of sight. You can hide some smaller stuff inside of here and also open this up, you know, create an armrest slash cup holders over here and then you can also uh, get move those seats up all together both of them and if you wanted to have more room like maybe put your mountain bike inside of here and check this out even those uh, floor mats those all season floor mats on this vehicle and the floor itself it does have this map of the moon in here so again another reference to that apollo 15 mission in the middle console what do we have we have the usb c and the usb port we have uh, vents, again, this bronze trim around it, and then you have your regular climate control for the back seat. So it has a tri-zone climate control, one for the back and then two for the front. It does have the heated seats. It does not have the ventilated seats, which is a bummer in Florida. And uh, when I was telling you, this is probably going to be the best angle to show it to you. It, it does have this transparent roof. Now it's tinted, it's nice, but you can see through them basically in all four panels, two in the front and two in the back are completely removable. So you can make this a convertible. And one thing to mention is this glass right here drops down too completely. So if you want to have that airy feeling like driving in a convertible electric pickup truck, you get it in the Hummer. I can't wait to show you the inside of it. But before we do that, let's hear how this vehicle sounds when you close the door. Boom. That's a pretty nice and solid thud if you ask me. Now, uh, it does have this typical GM chime as you could hear. Now in the front door right here, here's what we can see. Hummer EV right here in this white portion of this door panel. Then you have some of the bronze accents. It's very cool looking too. It does have two memory seat and then you have the mirror window lock controls over here, the standard things. And like I said, more pronounced moon uh, map right here. Now this one has a footprint on the moon. So there was a man on the moon in case some of you didn't believe that. Right on the door sill over here you have basically a mimicking of that front grill that you see up uh, in front of the vehicle. And then before we get inside I want to show you there's this little bridge over here. Again there's a little moon map right there but that's to store even some larger objects to be honest with you. Now what do we have on the left hand side of the steering wheel? Let's check this out. You have the electronic parking brake. We have the front release tail gate release you have the rear window or all windows down this is a pretty cool feature i'll show it to you and then uh, you have the lane keep assist the light for the rear bed and then the, you can turn on that power outlet that's in the bed by the way i didn't tell you that it does have the 400 watt power outlet in the bed and check out this trim it's pretty cool looking
Well, if you thought that the exterior was amazing, check out the interior of this vehicle. It packs a ton of technology, yet at the same time, it still maintains that rugged, off-road, burly character of a Hummer. Now, I really like that bronze trim that you can see around here, and this is the Edition 1. It's signified by this badge over here on the inside. And, and then you have those huge vents. Now, 13.4 inch screen, that's one of them. Then it's accompanied by a 12 inch screen and instrument cluster and a big, big steering wheel over here. Really nice, massive, good to the touch. Let's take a look at it up close and personal. First of all, on the top of the steering wheel, you have this sensor and that's part of this uh, autonomous drive uh, cruise control where you can check this out on the highway. The vehicle is going to A, pay attention to where they're, you're paying attention. So it's going to uh, look at you and make sure you're paying attention to the road, but it's going to change lanes on a bunch of highways that are marked in their system. And there's like 200,000 uh, miles of that that's uh, already mapped out. Over Overall, the steering wheel, again, the heritage of a Hummer lives right here. Big Hummer EV spelled out in the middle. And then at the bottom, you have the HEV in uh, this uh, gunpowder metal uh, metallic color uh, over here. You have a bunch of buttons on both sides. One of them, this one is for the cruise control. You have lane keep assist. You also have the front uh, accident uh, braking or front accident detection. This uh, part of the screen basically controls what's going on in your 12-inch uh, instrument cluster. So we're gonna take a look at in a second. Also, one other thing is here's your regen button over here. So that uh, adjusts the uh, regen braking for the vehicle uh, so we're going to check that out while driving now first of all i love this screen but i also love the graphics of it this is something i have never seen in any of the other gm models and that's because this is when gmc partner up with epic games to develop the software for or the graphics for for this vehicle the software is actually developed by google automotive and that's uh, what runs the infotainment system we're going to take a look at this in detail and the combination of the two in conjunction with the bose stereo that developed all the special sounds and effects for this vehicle is truly amazing now i have to admit that playing with this software for a little bit with in this vehicle i found that it lags a little bit so maybe they need some uh, over the air updates that are going to send out to you uh, but overall it's a pretty cool system when they get all the bugs out it really is going to be truly amazing so what we see in front in here so first of all you can see like this uh, moon map over here and you can see that again this is a connection with that apollo 15 mission and the gm efforts or the gm involvement in developing that rover for that mission it truly lives in here uh, let's take a look at what we have now we have several different options first of all you have the option for display layout and we have sport that's what it is right now clean let's see what that means so basically cleans it up you have the lunar display all right sport off-road gives you probably some other options yeah roll and pitch and then uh, the last one is a digital display so these are your options for the display uh, as far as the layout now we go back from here left side info what's going to be displayed over here right now it's compass and you can have time and temperature if you wanted to tire pressure pitch and roll g-force or just leave it blank right side info we're in here info page options units speed warning speed sign warning software info reset to default that's what you have in here very nice and very clean system it also gives you some of the information that uh, you need so of course right there there is a range 138 miles miles left i believe it was of about 40 percent charge left on this vehicle so that's what it shows you on the left hand side on the right hand side it shows you whether the battery is charging or actually using power we're standing still zero miles per hour vehicle's got 227 miles we're in park let's see what else is here right now it says no phone connected i'm going to try to connect my phone and set up the android auto because i know it does have the wireless and uh, here's your info trip one two timer tire pressure driver's assistant trailer brake off-road energy usage suspension travel all of those info pages are available to you let's go to the music it kind of looks for it but it doesn't find anything compass phone settings and back 
to the main screen. So really, really nice. The one problem that I have with this is, you know, I had to lower this steering wheel a little bit just uh, to be able to see it. So if you are driving, this steering wheel kind of gets in the way. And I'm not sure if there's any other way that they could have done it, but it kind of obstructs the view just a little bit. Now, by the way, you can see I'm moving the steering wheel up and down. It is tilt and telescoping and it's all electronic or electric assist, I should say. And now back to this 13.4 inch screen. Okay, really nice design. Again, Hummer EV, uh, stay in the demo mode for now. And uh, again, pay attention to the graphics, to the icons that are on the screen, completely different than anything that uh, you've seen probably. And we have audio, maps, phone, energy, uh, Google Assistant, Play Store. Like I said, it was developed by Google Automotive. So that's why you have all this uh, Google icons in here. Cameras, off-road, trailering, rear climate settings, Wi-Fi hotspot, my GMC studio, my GMC, Google News and podcast. I probably have to connect this vehicle to the internet to get all of this uh, as functional equipment. So let's take a look at the audio. It does have the Bose audio steering. I'm gonna turn that down, unfortunately. Uh, but as far as the sources, you have AM, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, and a USB. So those are your media sources. And then go back to your home screen, Maps. And it's gonna show you the Google Maps. Well, welcome to Google Maps. Uh, and it's uh, going through the setup. Uh, again, we're in the demo mode right now. So uh, turn on location to enable, let's turn it off on. Actually, I don't really need to learn more. I just need to see the maps, share trip. Okay, I, I will know what that means, but I have to click okay and done in order to, come on, I just want to see the map. Can I see the map? And now it's probably not gonna load it because I didn't go through the entire setup. So I apologize for that. But I'm going to try to uh, connect the uh, Google or Android Auto to it to see if um, we're going to see the maps that way. Phone. All right. So that's what it says right here. Manage phones. I actually have my phone stored in here, I believe, or not yet. So Bluetooth pairing. It's really easy. Open your phone. Bluetooth settings. I'm going to search for this vehicle in Bluetooth. My GMC. I don't know if you can see it over here i'm gonna click on that passkey 377146 hit pair over here pair over here uh, bluetooth pairing i am connected we're gonna enable android auto and here it is we have the uh, android auto on the screen it's wireless connection like i said i was playing with it for a little bit and you know, I have to tell you, this is uh, still work in progress, in my opinion. There's still little bugs here and there, but I, I think once they get it all up and running, it's going to be a pretty sweet system. So it does have this wireless connection, maps. I mean, you can use the Android Auto, which actually takes up on the part of the screen, not the entire one. Or you can use the regular maps if we ever get those to work. So uh, let's go back and see what else is here as far as uh, the other settings, energy settings. It says charging, schedule energy usage, just settings. That's what we have in here. Charge now, charge later. Charge level, it's going to give you a range approximately 332 miles. So pretty close to what they're claiming, 329. It's not bad at all. Go back and uh, let's see what else do we have here. First of all, cameras. This vehicle, as I mentioned before, has got nine cameras. And look at the quality of these cameras. This is really, really, really good. Now, we have several different views that you can see. This is the front view camera. And if I hit that, it's going to switch to the rear view camera in the same type of view. And then we have the top down camera from the front, top down camera from the back, and the side cameras from the back and from the front, trailer camera. And if you go to any other camera settings over here, it's moved. There's two more camera settings. I want to show you this. First of all, it does have the camera that's underneath the vehicle, right? It's a little bit dirty. so. Let's clean it off. You press this button, it sprays the water on it. Again, this camera uh, is towards the back of the vehicle, towards the front of the vehicle. So it is one camera, not two cameras underneath here, but it's definitely helpful when you're off-roading. Back to the main screen, off-road settings is what we have. There's a couple different options that you have. First of all, different auxiliary icons that you can actually set up. And I'm gonna show you this, this is pretty cool. So auxiliary, 
it says auxiliary one, two, three. Those are virtual switches. Sometimes you see those switches on the vehicles. Uh, you can assign those to different things, right? So let's say we're gonna edit this and you can change the name of it. So you can see how it uh, started blinking. I can actually change the name and put whatever I want in there uh, as far as the name. Now you can also, also assign a different icon to the auxiliary output. And I gotta tell you, check these icons out. Those guys must have been smoking some real good stuff to come up with this. <laughs> you can definitely see that it wasn't developed by the guys at GMC, but they had to get out and find somebody that actually has a sense of humor and um, actually knows how to do that. No offense to the GMC guys, you guys are great at what you're doing. Um, I don't think you're much fun though, but you know, this gives me hope. So uh, different auxiliary outputs can be assigned to different uh, features on it. Cameras we've already seen. What else do I want to show you is uh, this. So this is the air down mode, which means it allows you to deflate the tires when you're off-roading. And basically what you do is you can actually set up a different PSI and then the air is going to deflate from the tires. Now what I would like to see is the compressor that's built in to put the air back in the tires where you're back on the road. I've seen them on some of the vehicles like Land Rover Defender and um, you know some of the older Hummers even had it. I'm not sure why they really didn't do that. So we're not going to deflate the tires. We're not going off-road. So settings, there's tons of different settings. And again, connections, vehicle, apps, permission, date, time, display, users, privacy, storage. That's actually very similar to what you have on the regular GM uh, system. So we're not going to spend too much time on it. My GMC studio, rear climate control, trailering, um, off-road, you know, we've seen all that. Well, let's, uh, let me show you something else. So down below here is a switch or a dial where you can actually change the different drive modes. Now it, it does have a few functions on it. So first of all, this is uh, uh, raising the vehicle, lowering the vehicle, so the suspension up and now this is your crab walk. So if you, if I hit this button over here and uh, I hold it, it enables the crab walk and you know, I'll show you what that is and you turn that, this off, it goes back to normal. Now, there's another button over here, which I didn't know what it was, but if you press this button right here, on the screen itself, it says your mode mission, epic ideas at gmc.com. So that tells you, hey, you know, if you have any ideas about this vehicle or about improvements, send the email to this address. At least that's what I think it means. And then you have several different drive modes. So when you twist that dial, Here's what happens. Check this out. Isn't that great? It looks like a video game like this. A truck is breaking some kind of a barrier and getting into the mode that it's designed to be in. Now also, I want you to pay attention to this. So uh, here is kicking up dirt. Absolutely. Paved roads. No, respect the watts. Use off-road only. So, I mean, it also has somewhat of a sense of humor in this. This is not like a, a very uh, politically friendly or politically correct. Now, I like this mode, but check this out. Tow hull. Look at this. This is towing a spaceship, a rocket, or a space shuttle, whatever that is. I'm not uh, too much involved, unfortunately, in the whole moon exploration. Um, so, uh, very nice graphics. You can definitely see this was done by the video game people. Super nice screen. It's lagging a little bit and it looks like sometimes it's too sensitive, sometimes it's not sensitive enough. So there's little bugs here and there that needs to be worked out. Overall, very impressed with this infotainment system. You have your uh, volume knob, power button over here, and then you have these uh, kind of tough looking buttons over here. And, and that's important because if you're in a cold climate, not always you're going to be able to swipe your hand over the screen to adjust whatever you need, especially if you're wearing gloves, it's probably not going to work. But if you have the buttons uh, that are hard buttons to help you do whatever you need to do, this is pretty cool. Now also these buttons are called kind of multifunction. So you can see the seat and when you press this button, it says heated seats, ventilated seats or 
um, you know, we have two options, whether you want to heat it or ventilate it. And then uh, using these buttons over here, that's where you start it. So it opens up kind of that sub-menu for it. Several of these buttons have this, like for example, the different air vent settings. Okay, it can have uh, it set up from that sub-menu over here. Of course, the show fan button, air recirculating button, of course, the rear window defroster, front window defogger, etc. Here's your heated steering wheel over here, a rear diff lock, rear and front diff locks, and then you have your uh, hazard lights, traction control, you have your parking sensors, and this is your park assist, basically. Um, you know, if you want to exit park or park, you can choose that and then it's going to have the sensor whether the parking spot is on the right hand side left hand side parallel or uh, horizontal parking spaces so this is pretty cool i didn't check that out and i probably won't have time unfortunately to check it all out for you underneath here vans really nice really rugged looking you do have your wireless charging below that as well as the usb-c and the usb that can be closed off if you don't want to look at it and then if you look at this uh gear shifter it's a pretty cool looking gear shifter nothing really too crazy about it but it's more similar to like an uh, volvo than the gmc you push this button over here you put it in drive you push it forward to put it in reverse and you push the p for the parking of course so that's where your modes we already went over this and cup holders on the larger side you close this off and you know this is what you get now this is what i have a little bit of a problem with because this is all kind of this hard plastic materials i think it could have been done a little bit nicer maybe with this bronze trim or more of a different texture right over here and then uh, what we have in here is a console that opens up yeah, the vehicle sticker over here i'm going to post all the equipment that was added to it in the description of this video and uh, this is pretty much it i'll show you one more thing before we take it for a spin what i want to do is actually show you of how that wtf mode engages so really quick in order to engage the wtf mode what you have to do is press the traction control and there you go Here's the graphics that comes out. We're not gonna launch right now, but I want you to see something. Okay, in the screen over here, it says, what's to freedom? And that's the mode that we're in. That's basically the launch mode over here. So right over here, you have the torque. And here it says, vehicle will lower, check surroundings, repeated use will accelerate vehicle wear. So say, don't do it way too often then. Kind of defeats the purpose but if i hit continue over here it says vehicle is lowering dismiss it and then watch the freedom lowering and then here's what happens it's going to tell me to put my foot on the brake i will put it in gear and it tells me brake harder and then once this reaches the top it says floor it once i hit my accelerator it's gonna uh, build up we're not gonna do it right now but it's gonna build it all up and the torque and then i'm gonna release my brake and then the vehicle is gonna basically go into some crazy super sonic mode we're gonna check that out i promise so over here this is what's happening right now we're on the runway we're ready to go and what happens right now my seat is vibrating it's a lot of vibration going on with the seat kind of like hey wake up you should know you are in the launch mode I'm gonna turn that back on there you go i just touched that traction control button on it to actually get out of that watch to freedom mode and uh what it does though it's other than you know the launch mode it actually adjusts, optimizes the battery power it optimizes the uh, vehicle for the release and for the total launch mode so a couple more things and uh, we're gonna move on right here here's your mirror monitor this is the electronic mirror pretty cool because it doesn't have a super good visibility especially if you have this big tire behind you and one more thing here that's what I want to show you this actually opens up so you can remove the top panels right here those are panels that are removable you can take them all out and you can open up this back window and now you have a 
pickup truck convertible. How cool is that? And that's electric. So um, amazing. Let's go back here. Okay. OnStar SLS. You have your light controls. And this is pretty much it. One more thing. The way that you remove these, kind of like on the Jeep Wrangler. You've seen it. You un latch them from the rear and from the front there's another one in the front and basically slide them out and then you have a provided bags to store them in the front super excited to take it for a spin